In this tutorial, we're going to combine everything that we have learned about assigning variable and fixed charges, um, determining the naming of compounds from ionic and covalent bonds, to how to balance the equations. The concept of law of conservation of mass is extremely important in this case, in balancing equations. Consider an example where you would like to bake a cake. In order to make a cake, say you need your flour, your sugar, your milk, um, and your eggs. Once you've made your batter and placed it in the oven, the final product of your cake that comes out is going to contain your flour, your sugar, your milk, and your eggs. Nothing more and nothing less. So same goes with science and chemical reactions. If you're starting with these mixtures, you're gonna end up with the same number of atoms of that solution. However, there are certain elements that occur as diatomic elements. This means that on the periodic table, all these atoms usually occur as monoatomic. Monoatomic means that they occur as one atom. There are a few exceptions. There are seven elements that like to occur more so in pairs. That's because they're just more stable that way. Those seven atoms are also known as Brinkelhoff. Brinkelhoff stands for bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. These seven diatomic elements, we can take a look at why they are more stable this way. Say we have a hydrogen. Each hydrogen contains one electron. If they each donated their electron to a shared bond in a covalent bond, then you can see that the hydrogen is very stable because now each of these hydrogens have two electrons in its outer shell. The first shell only needs two electrons, so the hydrogen is the most stable that it could be. You can draw the same electron diagrams for the other six elements to show that they are more stable as diatomic elements in pairs. When we balance equations, we need to be wary of which elements are diatomic so that we're writing our balanced equations correctly. The three steps to balancing equations is first identifying your elements, counting your atoms, and then balancing them. Say we have a hydrogen and a chlorine, which yields hydrogen chloride. In order for us to first uh, write the chemical equation, we have hydrogen and chlorine, which are both part of the Brinkelhoff. So here we have to note in our subscript, they occur as pairs. And hydrogen chloride, based on the crisscrossing rule that we've learned before, um, gives us the chemical formula of HCl. The reactants are what we start with. The products are what we end with. The reactants and the products, we take a look at the, el the elements. These atoms need to be the same. So in this case, we have two atoms of hydrogen, two atoms of chlorine to begin with, but we only have one of each in the products. That wouldn't make sense, right? Because if you had a cake, you had a full batter to make one full cake, there's no way only half a cake would come out of the oven. Therefore, in order for us to balance this, we need to multiply. We have our reactants and our products like we have seen before. In order for us to get to two, we have to multiply. In balancing equations, there's not really any addition when you're balancing, there's only multiplication. So we can multiply this by two. This means that here, the coefficients are the ones that occur in front of these elements, in front of them. So these coefficients occur as one, one, and two, because you just multiplied this product with two. This means that chlorine is also part of this product, and chlorine also needs to be multiplied by two. In this case, it's happy because now both of them what you're starting with is the same number of atoms as what you're ending with, so hydrogen and chlorine atoms are both happy. 